Hi, John here, and in this video I want to talk about the new just-in-time VM access that we have in Azure Infrastructure as a Service. But before I do that, I want to give a little bit of background into why it's required and why hopefully you won't actually even need it. So if I think about Azure, I have this public cloud service with lots and lots of different capabilities. It's platform as a service, which can have serverless compute, web apps, mobile apps, logic apps, huge amounts of functionality. There's infrastructure as a service, VMs in the cloud. And when I think about infrastructure as a service, I have Azure and I create a virtual machine. Now, what's actually happening is when I create that virtual machine, what I also have is the idea of a virtual network. And that virtual network is broken up into one or more kind of virtual subnets, the same way we would divide up address space on premises. And then that virtual machine, well, it has a virtual NIC, so it has a NIC, which is attached to a virtual subnet. And through that, it gets a private IP address, part of that virtual subnet's address space. It's allocated typically by DHCP. So in a few exceptions when I wouldn't do that, if I had multiple IP addresses on a per NIC configuration. So that virtual machine, it starts up, it requests an address via DHCP, and it will get a private IP through its NIC for the virtual subnet that NIC is attached to. Now that private IP can be used to be communicated from anywhere within a virtual machine within that virtual network. Also, any virtual machine or resource that is connected to the virtual network via maybe virtual network peering. I have a different virtual network. Um, other methods of connecting to it. The other great thing I can typically do is imagine I have my on-premises location. Well, what I'm going to do is in that on-premises location I have other machines for example. I'm going to connect that to my virtual network. This connection could be through a site-to-site -site VPN. It could be using ExpressRoute private peering. Whichever one I choose to use, I'm essentially making this Azure virtual network an extension of my known IP space. And when I do that, machines now on-premises or connected to on-premises can talk to that virtual machine via that private IP just through this network connection, IPv4. So I could RDP to it, I could SSH to it if it was Linux, I could use WS management, so I could use PowerShell remoting or server manager or Honolulu, or all those different things. I don't need any other connectivity. And this is what I should be doing. When I think about how do I access Azure resources, I think about, well, they're on a virtual network, they're private IP addresses, I'm going to connect that virtual network IP space to my on-premises and connect to it that way. I'm not exposing anything out to the internet. The only time I want to expose things out to the internet is if I actually want to publish a service, maybe HTTPS. And typically if I'm going to do that, I would have, for example, some kind of load balancer. It would have a public IP. The load balancer would then have sort of distributions to multiple VMs for high availability and scale, or maybe it is a NAT rule to directly go to one VM, but any external access would come via this thing. I'm not giving the VM its own direct public IP. So that's what I should be doing. What I should be doing, ideally if I can, is I'm connecting on-prem to my virtual network and I access the VM via that private connection. But let's say I can't do that. For some reason, maybe I don't have this site-to-site -site VPN and I can't use a point-to-site VPN because I do that as well. From a single machine, I could be over here somewhere. I can establish a point-to-site VPN. Just a client installed on my machine and I can connect into the virtual network. But let's say I can't do that. I need to be able to connect directly from the internet to my virtual machine. And if I just create a VM through the portal, what it actually does is it gives the VM a public IP address directly. So on this NIC as well, it also has a public IP. 
So now from the internet, I can be kind of sitting out here. I can connect directly into the public IP. Now this is not a great thing to just have standing there open. It's kind of like wearing a kick me sign on your back. Uh, people are going to attack that IP. Now I can have strong passwords. I don't use a default administrator name, for example. But still, it's very exposed, so I don't want to do that. So one level of protection I can do is network security groups. And what network security groups do is they enable me to create a set of rules based on source IP range, destination IP range, ports and protocols, and I can allow or disallow. So one of the things I could do is, well, if I know what IP address I would be coming from to access this, I could create a network security group and I could normally, I would apply it at the virtual subnet level. I can also apply it directly on a NIC. And what that's gonna do is I could say, hey look, I'm gonna enable 3389 RDP to come to this particular virtual machine, but only when it's coming from the public IP address of this person. I know it, I can go and check what my IP is facing the internet. I only allow that connection in. So that's one good step. If I'm gonna open things up to the internet, at minimum, I wanna do that network security group, and I wanna lock it down based on my public IP address. But that's still always open. What about if I'm in a public area, and that public IP address could be used from a lot of people? What if I'm traveling around, and that's gonna keep changing? That would be very, very hard to maintain. So what the just-in-time VM access feature actually does is it really automates that network security group exception to let me connect in. So by default, it's locked. It's blocking any RDP or SSH or remote management. I cannot get to it. When it's time for me to want to do a connection, what actually happens is I kind of go to the portal, I go to the Azure Security Center, and I turn on just-in-time VM access for that VM, and I say I want it for two hours. At this point, it will work out what is my public-facing IP address, and it will go and modify the network security group to allow an exception for whichever protocol I'm selecting, be it RDP or SSH or WS management. It will add kind of that exception just for my IP address that I'm currently saying, hey, I want access, just for that period of time. When I enable that, now I can go and RDP in from the internet. When that time expires, it will close that exception. So I now can't access it again. So that's really the benefit of this. If I have to have something public facing to access, maybe I don't have any connectivity here, maybe this is a jump box, so I connect to this and I can get to other virtual machines, then with the just-in-time VM access, I'm not having just an open connection. I'm not even having it always there from a particular IP from me. Instead, when I need to access it, i.e. just in time, I go to the portal, I say, hey, I wanna turn this on. It adds the exceptions to whichever network security groups there are. Now, I have to have the NSG there already, either on the NIC or the subnet, and it will add the exceptions to either or both. If I have both, it will add the necessary exceptions to both of them. So that's what it's doing, just in time VM access. And so now what we're gonna do is jump over and I'll just quickly show this in action. So here I am, I have a test B series virtual machine. And even though I wouldn't typically do this, what I've actually done is I've gone ahead and I've given it a public IP address. Now I have turned on the just-in-time VM access for this virtual machine. So if we go ahead and look at its networking, it's showing me it actually has a public IP address and that private IP address, which is the one I would normally use if I had network-to-network -network connectivity from on-prem to my Azure virtual network via site-to-site -site VPN or Express Route, or even if I was doing a point-to-site connection. But I gave it a public IP to demonstrate this functionality. It's also showing me the network security group rules. And you'll see a few interesting ones. Uh, security center, just in time rule for port 22, so SSH, 3389, RDP, 
and then some of the management protocols. And there's currently a deny for the destination on its private IP. That's attached to its subnet. There's also one attached directly to its network interface. Now that's got some allows, but they're gonna be overridden by the denies. There's also default rules to allow all connectivity within the virtual network from the Azure load balancer, and then deny everything else, i.e. from the internet. On that public IP address, there is a DNS name. So if I look at my configuration, I can see I have a test B series dot east US dot cloud app dot Azure dot com. So if I try right now to connect to that, what we should see is it should fail because right now it has not enabled that exception to allow this connection to actually take place. So right now it's trying to connect and it won't let me. So what we're gonna do is if we jump over to the Azure Security Center, now I've already turned it on for this virtual machine. So this is part of this sort of premium Security Center coverage. So you have to purchase that, it's a per OS instance per month charge. And now I can go to just-in-time VM access. And you can see I've turned it on for my test B-series virtual machine. So if I select this and I say request access, it's going to ask me, well, which protocols you want to use, which ties up to a certain port. So I just want to enable it for 3389. And I just want it to detect what is my public-facing IP address. And sure, I'll turn that on for three hours, but you can see I can kind of change that. And I'll say open port. It's gonna validate, it's gonna check who I'm coming in from, and it's saying it's now active. If I now went back to that virtual machine, went back to its networking, and I look at its network security groups, and it's great this new networking page actually shows me information about my private IP, public IP, and the NSGs that are actually being applied. Hey, look, there's a new one that's been added to allow. And that source is based on what is my public-facing IP address. So it's detected that and added a rule explicitly for my IP. Because of that, if I now try and connect, going to let me. So I could put in whatever account I'm using. Checking the certificate. And I'm connected. So that's it. At the end of the day, that's what that just-in-time VM access does. It's a phenomenal feature. It's part of that premium security experience. So you do pay that per node per month. And it's literally that simple to use. Hope this was useful. Uh, if it is, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and on my Twitter at NTFAQGuy so I can let you know when there's new videos. And a thumbs up would be appreciated. Thank you.